Welcome back to Star or Shovel War, my name's Luke and in today's review we're going to be taking a look at Ground Divers on the Nintendo Switch, an excavation action puzzle game in which you control a futuristic mining drone and have to excavate precious materials from increasingly complex environments. The game shows some similarities with the classic Dig Dug games but its mechanics are uniquely different. So let's delve into this review and see if we've got a hidden gem on our hands and don't forget to like and subscribe to support both me and the channel. So the story with this one sees you playing as the latest recruit of the Ground Divers, a specialist team of excavators contracted to find and retrieve rare and precious materials from beneath the earth. The game's intro gives us a bit of a backstory on how they came to be, informing us that at one point the planet had been stripped of almost all of its resources, but it was rescued by some kind of divine being who gifted an entirely new energy source to its populace. Flash forward a few years and a new age of technological advancements have been ushered in, with the ground divers established as the go-to company for those who were seeking exotic substances hidden deep beneath the planet's surface. Surface. And as the newest member of the team, you've been assigned a new experimental mining mech known as Suruhashi and entrusted with safely piloting the little guy through the dangerous depths to retrieve said riches. Now, throughout the game there's not a whole lot more in terms of overall plot development and the storyline is mainly focused around the team obtaining contracts from a number of questionable individuals and the relationship between its members. With each new level we do get a bit of an introduction to the area and its history as well as the client we're going to be serving and upon completion there's usually a short interaction between the team members or the introductions of new ones with a couple of different dialogue options thrown in for good measure. But overall I'd say the story with this one serves more as a bit of light hide comic relief between stages rather than a deep and engaging plot that you're going to remember for years to come. So as I said in the intro, you can kind of think of this one as a spiritual successor to the Dig Dug or Mr. Driller games, though a little more strategic, a little less arcadey and with a dash of roguelike for good measure. The basic premise of this one is simple though. In each of the game's areas you have to dig your way down to the bottom of the playfield. Each level contains multiple areas and at the bottom of the final area you'll find the rare material you've been sent to recover. Unfortunately, you can only spend a few minutes in each area before a 60 second countdown timer begins and enemies start swarming your base, so you must vacate the area before this time hits zero, or it's game over, as is the case if you lose all of your health or run out of action points. Failing a level results in you losing any materials you've gathered in the run, but you are able to retire and retreat back to base at any point, which does allow you to keep most of them. Now each run starts with you just below the surface in a base camp and you control your mech by placing down waypoints with the most direct route to these automatically planned out for you. Each waypoint you place costs action points so it's in your best interest to place as few as possible whilst working your way through the environments but for each block you dig or enemy you defeat you'll earn back a few points of AP with the amount being dependent on the type of block or enemy and as well as standard blocks there are also special gold star blocks which reward large amounts of AP as well as purple ones which remove AP. Other than movement though, AP serves several other important purposes. Firstly, it can be used to create additional pit stops, which not only serve as points from which you can upgrade and heal your mech, increasing its damage and health, they also allow you to sell any items you find for additional AP and switch out your attachments. When upgraded, they offer additional functionality as well, such as the ability to unveil sections of the play area, set traps for enemies, or purchase deployable companions to help you fight or mine, and throughout each run you'll make frequent pit stops to aid with progression. Now the game also features a unique cheer mechanic, whereby tapping the R button builds a meter in the bottom right corner, which not only provides a boost to your mech's damage, it also allows you to expend AP to launch a special ability, destroying multiple blocks and dealing heavy damage to enemies, but doing so drains the meter, requiring you to refill it with a few cheers after a short cooldown. 
It's also worth noting that as you mine, your mech lays down cables leading back to the nearest pit stop from which your cheer energy has to travel. So the further away this is, the longer it takes to rebuild the cheer meter. Now the basic gameplay mechanics in Ground Divers are easy enough to get to grips with, and you shouldn't have too many issues working your way through the first couple of levels. However, things do become increasingly more challenging. Each level introduces new block types which prove more difficult to break, there are regions of toxic gas and heat which sap your health or AP, and you'll also start to encounter enemies and blocks with fire and water affinities. This though is where the pit upgrades and mech attachments come into play, as each run you'll be rewarded with materials and TP which can be used outside of missions to craft equipment, perform upgrades or purchase single use items. The TP you earn does serve several other purposes, the main one being to acquire new licenses to unlock new levels, but you can also purchase new furniture to decorate your hub area, a couple of alternative skins for your mech and a bunch of different artwork. The main thing you're going to be using it for though is to craft attachments for your mech which come in a few different varieties, each requiring more advanced materials than the last, and while crafting you can spend TP to increase its star rating, which in turn increases the number and quality of bonus stats on the attachment. Where this system falls down a little though is with the RNG factor, as the stat boosts are selected from a reasonably large pool, and I ended up burning through about 3000 TP on just 3 attachments alone, and I still failed to get the fire modifier that I was after. Out of the 10 attachments that I did craft, I'd say that only 3 of them were actually useful, and it's worth noting that useless attachments can't be salvaged either, and can only be destroyed. Now that pretty much covers everything there is to know about the game, it's a pretty simple concept which has you repeating missions to mine for materials and TP, and crafting upgrades and attachments until you're able to reach the rare resource required to unlock the next level, and overall I found it to be an enjoyable play, but the RNG elements do make it feel overly grindy and a little frustrating, as they not only affect crafting but also the levels themselves. While the level layouts being randomly generated do add to the overall replayability of the game, they also make the difficulty very inconsistent, as in some levels you'll find a ton of bonus AP blocks giving you plenty to use in pit stops, whereas other levels will be filled with enemies, hazards and a lot more of the harder blocks. When it comes to the enemies, though they don't really pose a huge threat, to be honest they're more of a nuisance than anything else, and alongside the fighter companion you'll have plenty of items to take them out, but there were several occasions where I died to them due to the health bar being on the mech itself and not the HUD, which does make it difficult to keep an eye on. Overall though I'd say that Ground Divers is a reasonably casual game which extends its playtime through requiring you to return to previous levels to grind materials and TP. There are a total of 7 levels for you to play through, each having easy and hard modes with stars rewarded for completing specific objectives in them, but what I will say that is once you've completed the first level you pretty much know what to expect for the rest of the game, and in that sense things can get pretty repetitive, with no new mechanics introduced beyond the first couple of levels. If you're looking for a game to dip in and out of whilst on the go, I'd say Ground Divers will serve you well as a time filler title, but I feel like me, if you try and play it for hours on end, you may end up feeling a little burnt out due to the repetitive nature of its gameplay. So visually I really like the art direction with the game, and it very much has that classic SNES feel to it, kind of like the classic Bomberman games with its pixelated characters and vibrant colour palettes. The level variety is also pretty nice, with each of them having different visual aesthetics and some nice sprite work for the enemies, though like I said, the visuals are the only thing which really sets the levels apart. When it comes to audio we get some nice sound effects, which are relatively simple but work well for the gameplay, and the game's music is decent with some nice variety, and tunes which are well suited for each environment. All in all, not bad stuff. So I didn't encounter any issues on the performance side of things, with the game running fine in both docked and handheld modes. 
When it comes to gameplay issues, the RNG mechanics and grindiness have to be the biggest issues for me, but aside from this, the game's HUD also proved somewhat problematic, mainly due to it being pretty huge and obscuring the view of your cursor in the corners, though you are able to zoom the camera out to alleviate this issue. I'd also say that, despite you being able to craft new attachments, I didn't feel like there was any real sense of progression, like successfully completing levels was more down to my own skill rather than me unlocking stuff and becoming more powerful, and due to this, throughout my time playing, I can't really say that I had any real drive pushing me to unlock and complete the next level, other than to progress the storyline. Overall though, Ground Divers is a decent little throwback to the classics, and it puts an interesting new spin on the classic formula. It's a relatively simple game which should prove accessible for most audiences, and while it does get a little grindy and repetitive, there's also a reasonable amount of replayability with this one, and so when it comes down to my own personal rating, I'm going to be giving Ground Divers 3 out of 5 stars. If you enjoy the classic Dig Dug and Mr Drill games and are looking for something with a similar vibe to it, then you might consider picking up Ground Divers. Just be prepared to deal with a spot of RNG with this one. And so that about does it for this review of Ground Divers on the Nintendo Switch. So were you a fan of those classic titles? And will you be digging into this one? Let me know down in the comments section below. As always though, hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy my content and want to see more. Thanks once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.